Hi everyone! So in this video, we will discuss mathematical language and symbol, but we will just focus on the variables. So first, what is a variable? It is represented by a letter like x or y since mas madalas maga ang ginagamit natin na variable ay x and y but actually you can make use of any letters okay and this is a symbol for a value that we don't know yet okay so for us to represent an unknown value we can make use of the variable okay what is an advantage of using a variable so it allows you to give a temporary name to what you are seeking so that you can perform concrete computations with it to help discover its possible values. So it allows us to go on a computation since parang ang sinasabi nga nito, how will you compute? Eh hindi mo nga alam kung anong isosolve mo. That's why we can make use of the variables to represent the unknown value for us to go on with the computation. Okay? So we can represent the unknown using the variable. Okay, example. So, is there a number with the following property? So, doubling it and adding 3 gives the same result as squaring it. Okay, meron bang property na kapag uh, dinoble natin, pag sinabing doubling, ibig sabihin we are multiplying it by 2 or yung tinatawag natin twice the number. Now, since hindi natin alam yung number, by the way, in the given in this given statement, we will focus on how to represent this using variable, okay? So, since ang given natin dito, is there a number? So, since hindi natin alam yung number, we can represent this number as x, okay? So, uh, itong number na to, ito yon yung it, at saka ito, okay? So, is there a number x with the property that 2x, so ito yung sinasabing doubling it, yung it na tinatawag dito, ito yung number. And yung number ni represent natin as x, okay? Adding 3 gives, ito yung adding 3, gives the same result as squaring it. Okay, so ito siya. This is how we represent the given statement using the variable. Okay, so another way, is there a number? So as you can see, we are uh, representing the number using empty boxes. Okay, so empty boxes, parang ang sinasabi niya, uh, empty. So tayo maglalagay, tayo mag assign So ano nga ba yung value na dapat nating ilagay dyan since empty yan para masatisfy natin yung equation? Okay, example. So, to illustrate the second use of variables, consider the statement. No matter what number might be chosen, if it is greater than 2, then its square is greater than 4. Okay, so introducing a variable to give a temporary name to the number you might choose enables you to maintain the generality of the statement. So, is there a number x with the property that 2x plus 3 is equal to x squared? No matter what number might be chosen, if it is greater than 2, then its square is greater than 4. So, no matter what number x, kahit ano pang number yan, na piliin mo kung ang x mo ay mas mataas sa 2. Ang square niya, yung result natin dito, is greater than Okay, let's to use variables to rewrite the following sentences more formally. So let us have two examples. First, are there numbers with the property that the sum of their squares equals the square of their sum? So we will try to uh, uh, represent the given uh, sentences using variables here. Okay, another example is give any real number. Its square is non-negative. Okay, let's have the first one. So, how are we going to um, represent the given statement sentence using a variable? Okay, so, are there numbers? So, dito palang masasabi natin ay. Okay, so, we can represent these numbers. So, since plural siya, so, we, we must have two or more. Okay, so, x and y. Okay, so with the property that the sum of their squares, so ibig sabihin, 
yung square, i-square natin yung first number, i-square din natin yung second number mo. Okay, so i-add natin yun. So, the sum of their squares is equal to, ayun siya, the square of their sum. So, yung square naman nung sum nung dalawa. Okay, so magkaiba yun ha. The sum of their squares, yung sum nung square nung bawat number, and then yung square nung sum nilang dalawa. Okay? Or, are their numbers x and y such that x squared plus y squared is equal to the square of their sum? Okay, we can replace the, uh, the uh, phrase with the property using such that. So, pwede ka naman gumamit ng such that. Or, do there exist any numbers x and y such that x squared plus y squared is equal to the square of their sum? So, we have different ways of um, writing sentences using variables. Okay, let's have the next one. Given any real number, its square is non-negative. Okay, so given any real number r, so we are representing the real number as r. Okay, r squared is non-negative. Okay, another, for any real number r, your r squared is greater than or equal to 0 since um, all positive numbers, okay, all positive numbers in, and 0 are non-negative, tama? So, therefore, yung r squared natin is greater than or equal to 0 as long as uh, hindi siya negative. Okay, another, for all real number r, r squared is greater than or equal to 0. So, ano lang difference nitong dalawa? Um, gumamit lang siya ng ibang term. So, for any real number, ito for all real number. Okay, so, three, three of the most important kinds of sentences in mathematics are universal statement. Okay, it says that a certain property is true for all elements in a set. So, take note of the word for all. Uh, minsan, ang ginagamit niya for each and for every. Okay, so minsan pag na-encounter natin yun, that means our statement is universal. Example, all positive numbers are greater than zero. Or pwede rin namang all non-negative numbers are greater than zero. Okay, now, conditional, conditional statement says if one thing is true, then some other thing also has to be true. Ibig sabihin, yung first statement natin, uh, yung first part natin, so if 378 is divisible by 18, then 378 is divisible by 6. So, it says if one thing is true, so 378 is divisible by 18, this is true then some other thing also has to be true okay so then 378 is divisible by 6 okay so let's see bakit nga ba 378 is divisible by 6 dapat true din to so paano natin nasabing true din siya kasi sabi dito it also has to be true so paano um because 18 is divisible by 6 and the last one, existential statement. It says that there is at least one thing for which the property is true. Okay, kahit isa. Okay, example, there is a prime number that is even. Meron daw prime number at the same time even number. So, ano ba yun? We only have two. Two lang. Okay, now, universal conditional statement. A statement that is both universal and conditional. Example, for all animals A, if A is a dog, then A is a mammal. So, in the given statement, dito, for all, so ang ginamit, eh, this is a universal statement. And then, if A is a dog, then A is a mammal. This is a conditional statement. So, this is actually a combination of both universal and conditional. Okay, they can be rewritten in ways that make them appear to be purely universal or purely conditional. Example, if A is a dog, then A is a mama. So, this is purely conditional. 
If an animal is a dog, then the animal is a mammal. For all dogs, A, A is a mammal. All dogs are mammals. So, ito yung mga examples na it can be rewritten as purely universal or, or purely conditional from the given statement. Okay. Now, let us have an example. For all real number x, if x is non-zero, then x squared is positive. Okay. How do we rewrite this? If a real number is non-zero, then its square is positive. For all non-zero real number x, x squared is positive. So, ito yung mga iba't ibang paraan kung paano mo i -re -re write itong statement na to. Na may pareho pa ring meaning. Okay? O isa pa rin ang ibig sabihin nila. Okay, another way. If x is a non-zero real number, then x squared is positive. The square of any non-zero real number is positive. So, you can rewrite the given statement. Pwede mo siyang isulat for as long as the idea is still there. Okay? And then, all non-zero real number have positive squares. Okay. What is the universal existential statement? So, a statement that is universal because it's First part says that a certain property is true for all objects of a given type. And it is existential because its second part asserts the existence of something. Okay, so let's have an example. Every real number has an additive inverse. So, ito, every real number, so kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina sa universal statement, kapag meron kang for every, for each, for all, so etong part na to, yung first part, this is the universal statement. And then has an additive inverse, this is your existential statement. Okay. So all real numbers have additive inverses. So this is another way. Another, for all real numbers are, so in this exam, um, an example, um, we represent the real number as R here. Okay. So there is an additive inverse for R. Okay, and then for all real numbers R, there is a real number S such that S is an additive inverse. So, yung real number natin dito, we represent this as R. Tapos, yung additive inverse niya, we represent it as S. Okay, so therefore, kung ang R mo ay positive, therefore, yung S na additive inverse niya is negative. Or, yung, if your R is negative, yung additive inverse niya na S is Positive. Okay. Now, let us have an example. So, every pot has a lid. So, all pots have lid. For all pots P, so we are already representing the pots as P. So, there is a lid for P. For all pots P, there is a lid L. So, yung lid ni represent na as L such that L is a lead for P. Okay, what is existential universal statements? So, this is a statement that is existential because its first part asserts that a certain object exists and is universal because its second part says that the object satisfies a certain property for all things of a certain kind. Example, there is a positive integer that is less than or equal to every positive integer. So, itong first part, this is your ex existential. So, ito na naman si every. This is your universal statement. Okay, let us have an example. How do we rewrite? So, there is a person in my class who is at least as old as every person in my class. Okay, so how do we rewrite this given statement? Some person in my class is at least as old as every person in my class. Another, there is a person P. So, yung person na yun, represent na natin as P. So, there is a person P in my class that P is at least as old as every person in my class. Another, 
there is a person P in my class with the property that for every person Q in my class. So, yung Q na to, eto na yon. So, P is at least as old as Q. So, ni-represent niya na yung every person as Q. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell para updated kayo for more video tutorials. This is your guide in learning your math lessons, your Walmart channel.